I've been intrigued by AI, artificial intelligence, uh, since uh, Stephen Thaler first attempted to get patent protection for a couple of inventions that he claimed were created entirely by a creative machine he called Dabas. Uh, Dabas stands for Device for the Autonomous Bootstrapping of Unified Science. He also tried to get copyright protection for a work called A Recent Entrance to Paradise that he claimed was entirely created by his creative machine. In the United States, both of those were refused protection because in the U.S., uh, the law is clear that only humans can get patent protection or copyright protection, and since humans weren't involved in the creation of these, they could not be protected. And there's ongoing battles and fights over uh, whether that's correct or not, and only time will tell if, if that viewpoint in the United States is going to change. Then ChatGBT came out. I had a friend contact me, asked me if I'd seen it, he was playing with it, I decided to give it a try, and I prompted it to do a 500 word article on a subject on intellectual property. And I was amazed. Uh, within seconds I had this article which when I read it was grammatically perfect, um, read extremely well, very conversational, and very authoritative. But it was wrong. Uh, and it was wrong in very critical places, but it was also subtly wrong. If you weren't an expert in intellectual property law, you wouldn't have appreciated that this very authoritative article on this subject was inaccurate and was not giving you correct information. So since then, in doing other investigations and watching AI develop, I learned about hallucination and uh, I learned about how generative AI actually works. And to summarize, and on a very simplistic level, because I'm not an expert in how AI works, but what I've learned is AI is uh, taking information from a database, supposedly the entire internet, and it's looking statistically at the next best word to pick to answer the question that you have prompted it to answer. So it's not thinking, even though you're led to believe it's thinking because they're called deep thinking machines. It really isn't thinking, it's just statistically looking at what's the next best answer or next best word to use to respond to the prompt. And it has a, uh, what I'll call a template, a, a base structure that provides that information in a form that is uh, most acceptable to humans. That leads to it's got correct grammar, uh, it is authoritatively written, it's engaging when you read it, it's conversational, and all of those things makes the articles very interesting. Part of the reason why I don't think ChatGBT or generative AI as it is today is really going to take over our jobs. People in the uh, practice of law, accountants, uh, journalists, authors, artists, all of those, um, you know, those require human thinking, human input, and I'm not seeing it to the extent that I'm concerned that I'm going to be out of a job very soon. And what even uh, makes me more intrigued by this prophecy that ChatGBT is going to do away with all of these jobs is the more recent information that these generative AI machines can go mad. And mad is uh, defined as model autophagy disorder. Uh, and that occurs when AI or uh, generative AI consumes its, its own information. And they probably came up with uh, the name MAD because of uh, mad cow disease. 
why this MAD is likely to occur is even occurring with a generative AI is that others are theorizing that within the next few years, almost 90% of the content on the internet will be generated by generative AI. So they will be consuming their own content uh, more and more to the point of uh, them basically <laughs> believing their own information and going mad because of it. So with that in mind, the more I learn, the less I'm concerned. I'm going to be doing a series of these videos over the next uh, few weeks, mainly pointed towards the intellectual property aspects of AI, how to protect AI, what can be protected, what can't be protected in the big gray area we still uh, live with uh, regarding AI. And some of the things I'm seeing both at the copyright office in trying to deal with AI, the courts, and what I see is some uh, serious issues uh, that we're going to have to deal with in the future as AI continues to develop, which uh, unlike it taking my job, I don't believe that's going to happen, but I do believe uh, that AI is here to stay. It's going to develop further. In many respects, it's not new. We've been dealing with AI uh, for decades. It's just now really in the news. Stay tuned. In the interim, if you're interested uh, in intellectual property, uh, please uh, give me a call. We can discuss any issues that you might have. Also, there's a link below uh, to a white paper I've developed on the value of intellectual property uh, to business owners and businesses and why intellectual property has never been more valuable than it is today. Mm -hmm.